Hey guys, you might need a block for this practice. You can use a book or anything else you have handy that you can put some weight on. So we're gonna start out all the way onto our backs and we'll start out with some breathing exercises. So we're gonna take our hands and just place them onto our belly. We'll do some diaphragmatic breathing here. So we'll start by inhaling, pressing the belly up into the hands. And on the exhale, we're gonna draw the belly button all the way down toward the spine, toward the mat. Inhale, lift the belly. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift the belly. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift the belly. Exhale, lower the belly. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift the belly. Exhale, lower it down. Inhale, lift the belly. Exhale, lower the belly down to the floor. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift the belly. Exhale, lower it down. Keep breathing like this diaphragmatically. It'll help to settle the mind and settle the body so that we can begin our practice. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. And then just release the hands down, return to a nice normal breath here. And then just go ahead and hug those knees into the chest. You can take your hands onto the shins like you're rolled up in a little ball here and just find some movement, maybe rocking back and forth, just massaging the spine a bit. And then extend the legs all the way up to the ceiling. And then we're gonna bend the knees. We're gonna bring the shins parallel to the floor and we're gonna bring our knees out in front of the hips slightly. And we're just gonna tap the feet down and then lift them back up. Make sure the lower back is pressing all the way down into the floor. And we're just gonna tap those feet down and lift them up. Make sure the knees don't hug into the chest, keep them in front of the hips. Just tapping and lifting, tap and lift. And if you want, you can take the hands behind the head and you can lift the chin. You can lift some of the shoulders off the floor as you tap and lift. Bring the left knee in and the right elbow toward the left knee. Extend the toes, hands to toes. Bring this whole thing back to center and then twist the body to the right. Center and then switch the legs. Twist to the right, extend. Bring it back to center and then twist to the left. Good. Back to center, switch the legs. Twist to the left. Extend. Tap, bring it back to center, twist to the right. Bring it back to center, switch the legs. Twist to the right, extend and tap. Bring it back to center, twist to the left. Center, switch the legs. Twist to the left, extend and tap. Good, back to center, twist to the right, and go ahead and switch those legs. Twist to the right, tap and extend. Good, back to center, and twist to the left. Good, back to center, switch the legs. Last one, to the left. Tap and extend, center, twist to the right, back to center, switch the legs, twist to the right, tap, extend, good, back to center, twist to the left, go ahead and hug those knees into the chest, take a little rock back and forth, you deserve it after that one. Good, hug those knees in, take a little gentle rock left to right, maybe rock and roll to a seat a couple times, massaging the spine. And then on your next visit up to center, just bring those hands down in front and go ahead and curl the legs back behind you. Just come into an all fours position here. So wrists beneath shoulders and knees beneath hips. And we'll take a couple cat and cows. Exhale, bring your chin to your chest, round the spine. And inhale, look up, let the belly drop down. Chin to chest on the exhale. Inhale, look up, let the belly drop down. Chin to chest, round through the spine. And then just curl your toes under here and come to a neutral spine and just let the knees hover. So just about an inch off the floor, pull the belly in, separate through the ribs, try to keep the neck neutral, gaze is down, fingertips into the floor. 
and then nice and easy, release those knees down to the floor. Go ahead and extend the left leg all the way back behind you and bring the left knee to the nose. Extend it back, reach the toes up, knee to nose. Extend and lift, knee to nose. Extend and lift, knee to nose. Extend and lift, knee to nose. Extend and then just cross that left foot over to the right side and just gaze over to the right. Get a nice stretch in that left glute here. And then bring that knee back down. And we'll go ahead and take those cat and cows again. So rounding through the spine, chin to chest. Inhale, look up, belly drops. Exhale, chin to chest, round. Inhale, look up, belly drops. Exhale, round. And then go ahead and inhale, look up. And then neutralize the spine, curl those toes under, hover those knees once again. Press into the fingertips, go ahead and pull that belly in, neutralize through the spine, through the neck. And then go ahead and release those knees all the way down. Extend the right toes to the ceiling, knee to nose. Extend, toes lift, knee to nose. Extend. Knee to nose, extend, knee to nose, extend, knee to nose, extend, and then go ahead and take those right toes over to the left side and just gaze over at the toes, getting a nice stretch in that right glute. And then bring that right knee to meet the left, curl those toes under, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. And here we go. You can pedal the feet, rock the hips, find some movement here in your downward facing dog. So dropping the head through the arms, lifting through the sitting bones. Heels don't have to touch the floor, but you can guide them toward the floor if it feels good for you. And then maybe you rock those hips left to right. Or maybe you come up high on the tippy toes, bending the knees a little, trying to lift through the sitting bones. Try to bring them as high as you possibly can. And then coming back to your down dog, we're just going to take those hands and we're going to walk them all the way back to our feet. And we're going to take a nice fold at the back of the mat. Knees can be bent if the hamstrings are tight and you can grab the wrists or the elbows if you'd like to just hang here. You could shake your head yes and no. And then if you have those hands um, clasp, you can release them down to the floor for a halfway lift. So hands to the shins, flat back, and then fold over those legs. And then just look forward, walk those hands forward into that downward facing dog, and then just roll the body forward into plank. Go ahead and tip your heels over to the right. And we'll take a side plank so you can bring the right knee down to the floor if it feels good for you. And we're going to peel that left arm all the way up. So we're going to lift through the hips. Remember the right knee can be down if you'd like to modify. And if you'd like to make it harder, you can, of course, lift that left foot up. Good. Go ahead and bring that left hand down. Go ahead and bring that left foot down back to plank. Get ready to tip the heels over to the left side, or you can bring that left knee down. We're going to peel the right arm up. Good. Lifting through the right fingertips, lifting through the hips. And maybe if you want to make it harder, you can go ahead and lift that right foot as well. And we're breathing, lifting, pressing into the left hand. And then right hand down, right foot down. Go ahead and walk those hands all the way back to the feet. Come back into that fold at the back of the mat. If you want to grab opposite elbows, you can do that. Or you can just hang here. Nice full inhales and exhales through the nose here. And if you have those hands clasped, you can release them down to the ground or onto the shins. Halfway lift, look forward, flat back. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, just look forward and walk the hands forward into a plank position. From here, we'll drop our knees, our chest and chin, and we'll slide forward into a low cobra, pressing into the fingertips and the tops of the feet, and then sit back onto the heels for child's pose. And remember, child's pose is here for you whenever you need a break during your practice. It's always available to you. And from here, we're just going to curl the toes under and lift the hips up and back. Downward facing dog. And we breathe. Hands are going to walk back to the feet to fold at the back of the mat. And then look forward, flatten the back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, walk the hands forward, lower the knees, the chest and chin. 
Slide the body forward, low cobra, pressing into the tops of the feet. And then curl the toes under, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. And we'll walk the hands all the way back to the feet for that nice fold at the back of the mat. You can grab opposite elbows or you can release the hands down in your fold. Look forward, flatten the back. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, look forward. Walk the hands forward. And then drop the knees, the chest and the chin down to the floor. Slide the heart forward, low cobra. And then go ahead and press back onto the heels. Curl the toes under, lift up and back, downward facing dog. And then from here, we're just going to come up really high on the tippy toes and tiptoe the feet all the way up to the top of the mat. When you get there, look forward and flatten the back. And then just exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, bend the knees and rise all the way up. Bring the palms to press and exhale the hands to the heart and down by the sides of the body. Inhale, arms reach all the way up. Maybe we take a back bend. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, step the feet back to downward dog. And we breathe. On your inhale, roll your body forward into your plank position, lowering that yoga push-up, chaturanga, or your knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, low cobra, or upward facing dog. And exhaling back into that downward facing dog position. Inhaling the left leg all the way up and back. Bend the left knee and flex through the left ankle. And then we're going to take some circles with the hips. Forward with that knee, drawing a circle. And then just go the opposite way a couple times. And then bring that leg back. And then looking forward, step that left foot forward. Drop the right knee down. Swing the arms up for the crescent lunge. Shoulders are down. We're trying to get the left knee and the left ankle in line. Reaching up, gazing up, pull the belly in and sink the hip flexors forward. Release the hands down to flank the front foot and just straighten out that left leg. Keep flexing through the left ankle and fold over the left leg. Keep the hips up high. And then on your inhale, look forward, bend back into that left knee. And then just step the back foot forward, halfway lift. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, rise all the way up. Bring the palms to press. Exhale, hands to heart and down by the sides of the body. Inhale, the arms up, maybe a back bend. Exhale, fold it down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step the feet back to downward facing dog. Inhale, body forward into plank. Exhale, chaturanga or knees, chest, chin. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. And exhale, back into that downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts. Bend the right knee and flex through the right ankle. And then just bring that knee into the forward position for a couple circles forward. And then just go to the opposite way. A couple circles backwards. And then returning to that bent knee, go ahead and step that right foot forward, drop the left knee down, and swing those arms up into that crescent lunge. Shoulders relax, hip flexors push forward, right knee and right ankle are in line, so make adjustments if needed. Breathing here, gaze is up, heart is lifting, and then bring the hands down to flank that front foot. Go ahead and straighten the right leg and flex through the right ankle as you fold over the right leg. Hips are high. Internally, you're pulling the right hip back and the left hip forward. Breathing here, full inhales, full exhales. On your inhale, bend into the right knee, shift the gaze forward. And then step the left foot forward, halfway lift. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, bend the knees, rise all the way up. Bring the palms to press and exhale, hands to heart. And then down by the sides of the body. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. On the exhale, you can step, hop, float, lowering into plank or chaturanga. Upward facing dog. And pressing back to downward facing dog. 
On the inhale, the left leg will lift all the way up and back. Go ahead and bend the left knee and flex through the left ankle. And from here, if you'd like more, you're going to really stack those hips, lean the heart forward, and maybe you flip your dog over, letting those left toes touch down and bringing the left arm forward. Good. And flip it back over, stepping the left foot forward, dropping the right knee down, sweep the arms up into the crescent lunge. And then bring the hands down, flank the front foot, straighten out the left leg, flex through the left ankle, and just fold over the left leg, keeping the hips high. And then bend back into the knee, look forward, and step the right foot forward. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees, rise all the way up, bring the palms to press, and exhale the hands to the heart and down by the sides of the body. On the inhale, the arms reach up, maybe a back bend. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the palms, step, hop, or float. We're lowering on the exhale. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And we breathe. Good. From here, right leg lifts all the way up and back. Bend the right knee, flex through the right ankle. Again, if you want to flip that dog, you're stacking hip over hip and dropping the right toes back behind you. Right arm comes forward or just up. Lifting through the hips, very little weight in the right toes. And then unflipping the dog, right hand down, right foot forward, left knee down. Go ahead and sweep the arms up, crescent lunge. Sink the hips down low, shoulders relax. And then go ahead and bring those hands down, flank the front foot. Straighten out the right leg, flex the right ankle, and fold over the right leg. Breathing here. And then we'll look forward, bending back into the right knee, heart forward, left foot forward, halfway lift. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, rise all the way up, bring the palms to press, and exhale the hands to the heart. Good. Down by the sides of the body. And we'll breathe here. You can close the eyes, draw the shoulders back, tuck the tailbone. And then open the eyes, reach the arms up, maybe a back bend. Exhale, fold it down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step, hop, or float the feet back to plank through chaturanga or knees, chest, and chin. Upward dog. And then pressing back into our downward facing dog. On the inhale, the left leg lifts all the way up and back. Bend the left knee, flex through the left ankle. If you're flipping your dog, maybe pass through a side plank before letting those left toes drop down to the floor. Beautiful. Maybe keep the left arm lifted as you step the left foot forward. Drop the right knee down into your crescent lunge. Good. Just open the arms out and bring the right hand inside the left foot. And then reach through the left fingers and just lift that back knee. Draw the heel to the back of the room. And try to get some length here. And then pressing into that front foot, just rise up. So now you're in a twisted lunge. Maybe gaze over the left shoulder as you continue to twist. And then unwind and open up into your warrior two position. So left fingers forward, right fingers back, left knee is bent. You're pressing into the outside edge of the right foot. Shoulders relax down. And then we'll take that right hand down the hamstring. Reach the left arm up or back, sinking into the left knee. Stay here, or you can take that right hand and bring it all the way toward the left front pocket if you'd like more difficulty in the pose. And then return back into that warrior two. Go ahead and straighten out that left leg, and we'll come into our triangle pose here. So you can use the block underneath the left hand, or you can use a book, whatever you're using for stability here. And we don't want to have a lot of weight in the left hand as the right fingers reach all the way up. Both legs are straight, and we're drawing the right hip back rotating the left hip forward. Breathing fully here, and then we'll sink back into the left knee into warrior two position, and then we'll take a nice little side angle stretch here. So left elbow on the left knee, right arm reaches up, or you can bring the right arm forward, pressing into the outside edge of the right foot. If you'd like more, you can bring the left hand down to the floor or the block inside the left foot. And the right palm is forward, facing down towards the floor. You can stay here if you'd like more. We're going to come into a half moon position. So we're going to reach, grab that block if you need it or that book, whatever your prop is. You're going to lift into the left foot, lift the right foot off of the floor. So try to stack the right hip on top of the left hip. 
and flex deeply through the right ankle. So the lifted foot is flexed and you're reaching the right fingers up or you can keep the right hand on the hip if that feels better. And you're stacking shoulder over shoulder. Bring the right hand down and shoot the right toes up to the ceiling for a standing split. Good, and folding over that left leg as you do so. And then we're gonna take the right knee and we're just gonna bend the right knee and tuck it behind the left knee and then lift it all the way up. Go ahead and bend and tuck, maybe going lower toward the calf and lift it up. Bend and tuck and then lift it up. Go ahead, bend and tuck and then lift it all the way up. And then we're gonna bring that knee all the way outside the left foot and we're gonna come down to a seat. And we're gonna twist over to the left, bringing the right elbow outside the left knee. And the left hand is gonna be parallel with the spine back behind us for a seated spinal twist. You're gonna to continue to twist over to the left, gaze over the left shoulder, and you can straighten that right arm out if that feels good for you. Inhaling, lifting and twisting on the exhale. And then go ahead and bring this back to center and just take a little counter twist over to the right side. Good, coming back to center again, bring the hands down in front and lift those right toes back up to the ceiling for your standing split. And then bring the right knee into the nose and drop the right toes. Halfway lift, exhale fold. Inhale, bend the knees, rise all the way up, bring those palms to press and exhale the hands to the heart and down by the sides of the body. We breathe here, finding some peace in the breath, slowing things down, taking a moment to find balance. And then on the inhale, we'll reach the arms up. Exhale, fold it down. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, step, hop, float, lower, plank to chaturanga. Upward facing dog and downward facing dog, beautiful. On the inhale, we'll bring the right leg all the way up and back. And if you're going to flip the dog, you can flip or you can pause here in a side plank before you flip. Right toes tap down and the right hand comes forward. Good. Bring the right hand down or just step the right foot forward. Drop the left knee and sweep the arms up into that crescent lunge. Beautiful. And then we're just going to open those arms up. We're going to bring that left hand inside the right foot. Curl the back toes under. Lift that left knee. Right arm reaches up as you twist off to the right. Keep reaching through the right fingertips. And then press into the left fingertips. Maybe lift the left palm. And then rise up into this twist. Good. Keep drawing the right shoulder back and the left shoulder forward. And breathe. And then nice and easy, we're going to unwind and open up into our warrior two position. So right knee is bent and the right fingertips are forward. Gaze over the right middle finger and you're going to press into the outside edge of that back foot. Good. Pull the belly in, lift through the heart. And then just take that left hand down the hamstring, reach the right fingers all the way up and we'll just tip this back. If you'd like more, you can take those left fingers off the hamstring and take them toward the right front pocket. Sinking into the right knee. Good. Come back to warrior two and just straighten out that front leg. And we're going to prepare here for our triangle pose. So both legs are straight and we're just going to lean the body forward, reaching up through the left fingertips. Very little weight in the right hand. So use your block or your book or whatever you're using for a prop if you need it. And keep reaching the left fingers up. Left hip rolls back, right hip rolls forward. Press into the toes. Beautiful, and then just bend into that right knee, come back into the warrior two position. We'll take a little side ankle stretch. So right elbow on the right knee, or if you'd like more, you can take those right fingers onto the block or inside the right foot on the floor. And that left hand is coming forward and the left palm is facing down. You can keep the gaze up if it feels good for you.
And then we'll just shift the gaze down. We'll start to prepare for that half moon. So walking the back foot in a little bit, go ahead and grab that block if it's needed on the right hand and go ahead and press into that right foot. Lift the left toes, flex through the left ankle. Left hand can stay on the hip or if it feels good, reach those left fingers all the way up. Very little weight in the right fingers here. And then keep reaching and lifting through those left fingertips, through that left heel. And then bring that left hand down. And we'll bring those left toes all the way up to the ceiling for our standing split. Breathing here as you fold over that right leg. And then we're going to bend that left knee behind the right knee for a little curtsy here. And then shoot those toes back up. And then we're going to bend and lift. And then toes up. Bend, lift the gaze, and then toes up. Bend, knee behind knee, lift the gaze, maybe going lower, lift it up. And then bend, knee behind knee, lift it up, last one. And then drop that knee all the way down outside the right foot and go ahead and gaze over the right shoulder. Left elbow to the outside edge of the right knee. Right hand is all the way back behind us for a seated spinal twist. Go ahead and lift the gaze on the inhale and on the exhale, twist over the right shoulder, continuing to breathe in and out through the nose here. Good, continuing with that breath and that twist. And then on the inhale, we're gonna bring it back to center and on the exhale, counter twist over to the left. Good, bring it back to center, bring the hands down in front, and we'll bring those left toes back up for standing split, and then let the left toes meet the right, halfway lift, exhale, fold, inhale, rise all the way up, bring those palms to press, exhale, hands to heart, and then down by the sides of the body. So from here, we're gonna move into an arm balance. Um, do your best, uh, if you have a block or something sturdy you can use, you're gonna wanna grab that now. And you're gonna take that block and just place it um, at the center of the mat, kind of long ways so that the sturdy part is on the floor. And what you're gonna do is just step your toes onto the block and we're gonna sit back onto the heels, but we're gonna bring the knees out wide. We're gonna bring the palms down beneath the shoulders, but you wanna have a good distance between your toes and that block. And we're gonna prepare here for our bakasana, our crow pose. So bringing the knees outside the elbows or outside the triceps, you're going to shift the weight forward into the hands. Gaze will be forward and you can do this one foot at a time or maybe you just roll onto the tops of the toes and don't lift the feet. Remember not to look down. When we look down, we fall down. So keep the gaze as far forward as possible. Make sure those elbows are bent. And if you don't want to use the block, you don't need to. Again, pressing into the fingertips. Those are our breaks. We're gonna bend the elbows. Maybe this time take the knees behind the underarms. Keep the gaze forward. The seat is up pretty high. Everything is engaged. The spine is round. The core is engaged. It's lifting. And when you're ready, you can come down from your crow position and we're gonna meet in a little folded position here. So just folding over the legs. And we'll just take a nice little rock back and forth here. Just releasing. And if the hands are lifted, release the hands down, bend the knees, and just come all the way onto your back. So come all the way onto the floor with the knees up. Walk the feet in as close as you can. And we'll bring the arms down by the sides of the body. And on the inhale, we're gonna lift the hips up high for our bridge pose. So lifting the pelvis, lifting the hips, using the glutes to lift. Try to give the quadricep muscles a little bit of a break. Heels are down, toes are pressing. And we're coming up high on the shoulders. So very little spine on the floor. We're breathing in and out through the nose. And then we'll just nice and easy lower this down. You can heel toe the feet wide and bring the knees into center. And we'll do three of these. And then preparing once again, maybe walking the feet in even closer. On your inhale, lift the hips. Maybe this time we take the hands and interlace them beneath us. This will help you to rock onto the tops of the shoulders so that very little spine is on the floor. Heels are down, toes are pressing, arches are pressing. Make sure you don't look left to right. It's not good for the cervical spine. Keep lifting, lifting, lifting. And then go ahead and release those hands, release those hips. 
Now this next one you can try again if you'd like to take your third bridge or if you have a wheel in your practice, hands come to the ears. And on the inhale, we lift all the way up. So bridge or full wheel pose if you have a wheel. If you're in your wheel, you can walk the feet in if that feels good for you. And we're all lifting the pelvis. Pressing into the feet, pressing into the hands, and lifting. So pressing down, but lifting up. And then nice and easy, whenever you're ready, you can come all the way down. And we'll heel toe those feet nice and wide and let the knees drop into center. Hands can be down by the sides of the body. We'll just release the lower back here. And then heel toe those feet back in. Bring the bottoms of the feet to touch and just let the knees fall out to the sides. And we just settle things down a bit here. And then hug those knees into the chest. And then go ahead and grab the insides of the feet and draw the knees down toward the lower ribs. We're going to take a happy baby here. So we're going to roll the hips down to the floor, roll the shoulders down. We're just going to keep those knees bent. And if you'd like more, you can go ahead and straighten one leg at a time out to the side or back behind your head, whichever feels good for you. And then just do the other foot. And then come back into that happy baby. And then go ahead and hug those knees in and just release the feet down one at a time. Stretch the legs all the way out, preparing for our final pose, our Shavasana, our corpse pose, our resting final pose. So arms down by the sides of the body, feet are separated. Toes flop out so that the hips can relax and release. Eyes are closed. Go ahead and remove your tongue from the roof of the mouth. Relax any tension from the jaw. And just coming back into a nice, calm, comfortable breath here as we release and let the whole body relax. And then just begin to deepen the breath. Start to bring awareness back to the body, wiggling fingers, toes. Go ahead and reach the arms back behind you. Stretch the feet forward. Take a big stretch like you just woke up. And then on the exhale, hug the knees into the chest and take any final movements you may need here. And when you're ready, you can roll onto your side using your arm as a pillow. Remembering that our yoga practice is like life, it's a practice. Your life experiences can be just like these poses. Some of them are fun and they're easy and they make us happy, but some are difficult and they challenge us and they cause fear and stress and anger and doubt. But it's how we come into our yoga poses, it's how we come into all of our life experiences that will determine whether we suffer or we grow. And that is your choice. And you always have that choice. When you're ready, you can press yourself up to a nice easy seat at the top of the mat with the eyes closed, palms together, thumbs to the heart. And I thank you for sharing your practice with me tonight. Namaste.